So, you met a crooked lawyer, eh? As it turns out, they're just like rats everywhere. The good news is, you do not have to be a victim of them without serious repercussions. In this video, I'm going to explain how one can use today's technology to expose crooked lawyers. Lawyers are supposed to use certain ethics in the performance of their job. In today's world, these lawyers are so crooked, they don't care. They only care about one thing, and that's a conviction, and that is to make you a customer for life. These courts use a variety of different tactics to make you that customer. So how do you spot these tactics? Keep watching and you'll find out. First, we need to get down some basics. First of all, court-appointed lawyers work for who pays them. Since they're hired by the district attorney's office, guess who pays them? If you guess the district attorney's office, you are correct. So how fair of a court hearing are you going to get? If you guess zero, you are correct. If you ever wondered that if the judge, the district attorney, and your court-appointed attorney get together before the trial and discuss what the outcome would be, the answer would be yes. They do it all the time on every trial. So what can you do to offset the misconduct? Well, the only thing you can do, file a valid bar complaint. So how do you go about doing that, right? The first thing you need to understand the person going over the complaint will be a fellow attorney that is in all probability golfing buddies with the attorney you are filing the complaint about. One fact is, they are both members of the good old boys club, and members always stick together. They cover each other's back, so to speak. The good news is, they engage in this incompetent, crooked, and abusive behavior all the time. But it's up to you to prove clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence to the state bar before the attorney will be disciplined or disbarred. A valid complaint is a public official that is incompetent, crooked, or abusive. If your complaint doesn't include the words above, it will be dismissed as frivolous. You need clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence of the public official being incompetent, crooked, or abusive. You should also use those exact words in your complaint. If you don't, they will throw it out as frivolous. Now, frivolous is ideological, fantastic, or incoherent like something foolish. You're trying to accuse a person of being an alien or something like that. They'll throw it out. Don't use any, you know, words like psychopath or anything like that. A valid complaint definitions are malfeasance, nonfeasance, and misfeasance. And believe it or not, they do all of these all the time. Malfeasance means the willing full commission of an unlawful or wrongful act in the performance of a public official's duties which is outside the scope of the authority of the public official and which infringes on the rights of the person or entity. This is anything they do that is wrong or illegal, like hide evidence. That's malfeasance. Now look these words up, but these are just basic definitions. Nonfeasance means like a prosecutor willingly refuses to charge an individual because they're a friend. That is nonfeasance. Nonfeasance means the willingful failure to perform a specific act which is required part of the duties of the public official. In Maine, this is one of the most pervasive misdeeds by the district attorney. It's called the Brady violation, or failure to turn over favorable evidence to the defendant. They do this all the time. It is the most common form of misconduct cited by courts in overturning convictions. There is very little to hold prosecutors to the Brady obligation except filing valid complaints against them. Now, misfeasance. Misfeasance means the negligent performance of the duties of a public official or the negligent failure to perform a specific act which is required part of the duties of the public official. How to file a valid bar complaint. Well, the first thing you have to do is gather clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence of misconduct. Now, in today's day and age, this is very easy. First thing you want to do is go over to Amazon.com, and in the search bar, you type in camera glasses. And on the search results page, you will see all kinds of these wonderful James Bond type glasses. They look like eyeglasses, but they actually have a high definition camera and audio in them. This is your ace in the hole for catching a crooked lawyer being incompetent, crooked, or abusive. 
Other than that, it's your word against theirs. If they don't know that you're recording them because you're wearing these glasses that look like eyeglasses, they're going to pull some very bold moves, and you can catch them. If they know they're being recorded, of course, they're not going to say anything to you. Most of these lawyers look at the general public as complete idiots. So using glasses like these to record the audio and video of these encounters is priceless in filing bar complaints and making YouTube videos. These glasses are reasonably priced at around $50 to $60 and will record full audio and video for approximately 45 minutes to one hour. That should be just enough time to go visit your lawyer at his office and record the entire encounter. Once you have your lawyer with clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence on video and audio, you can then research what they have violated. One thing these court-appointed lawyers do all the time is violate confidentiality rules. So you could easily catch a lawyer on video or audio violating this. You can also catch your lawyer lying to you because they do this now out of routine. And there are several violations which you can go over on the main bar website to look out for. After you have your video with these glasses of your lawyer being incompetent, crooked, or abusive, you have to find that clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence. Go over to the mainbaroverseers.org. You click on Regulation, Main Rules of Professional Conduct. And then once you get to that page, you look down and it says it has a big table of contents on client-lawyer relationship. You need to go, to go down through the first few and read them. They have to have competence. They have to have scope of rep representation and allocation of authority between client and lawyer. They have to tell you about diligence, tells you about communication requirements, fees that they can charge, confidentiality of information, which they violate all the time. They violate conflicts of interest to current clients, duties to former clients. They violate all kinds of these rights, but this is where you find them, is the main bar, overseers.org, main rules of professional conduct. Okay, so you've got your audio and video of your lawyer being them, and you go over to the board of overseers of the bar, or you can find a condensed version on despicablemain.org of these same rules and regulations that they have to follow. And you go down there and you identify the clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence of the misconduct. Now, once you do, you have to write a bar complaint. Most states have complaint forms for you to fill out. They make it look like an official document that must be filled out because they made it. You do not have to use their complaint form. Some complaint forms in some states ask all kinds of ridiculous information they have no right even asking about. Like if you go over to Maine, you see that they ask for birthday and social security number. They have no right to ask that type of information. I want to tell you why they want that information. They want that information, your birthday, and your last four digits of your social security number so they can immediately look up your bank account and see how much money you have in banks because then they know how much money you have to potentially sue them with. This is the only reason they ask for a birthday and social security number. You do not have to fill out their complaint form. You can just write the bar a letter. All the letter has to contain is the relevant information needed to file a valid complaint. Some states are so despicable with their complaint form, they ask you to sign a sworn statement and get it notarized. If you see this trap on your complaint form, it is put there to discourage you from filing the complaint. It is a psychological trick to discourage you from filing that complaint. Think about it. When most people see that it has to get signed by a notary, and they have to pay a notary to do that, most people are going to think, no way, I don't want to go through all that. And this is why they do it. What they don't tell you is that you do not have to. All you have to do is send them a letter. That little trap on the complaint form is to discourage you from filing the complaint. It is psychological propaganda at its best. Or at least I hope it's the best. That's a pretty devious trick. They cannot reject your complaint because you didn't use their form and have it sworn by a notary. All it has to be is a valid complaint. It does not have to be filled out on the little clown form they made up to look official. So just send them a letter with clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence that you caught with your camera glasses of misconduct, and there is your valid complaint, and they cannot ignore it. All it has to be is valid. That's it.
There's no requirement that it has to be any type of sworn statement, although you look down through the grievance form and it does say a signature is required, so sign it and give them the relevant information they need to contact you. Make sure they have a valid mailing address and an email address and possibly even a phone number. Also on the board of overseers of the bar, you will have an, an attorney directory. First thing you want to do is look up your attorney's name and find their information, especially their bar number. You always want to include their bar number on the complaint form. Remember what happens when you send your complaint letter in. You're sending it to one of their friends, and their friends are going to try to find anything they can to make it frivolous and throw it out. If you provide them with clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence, you are going to force them to take actions against that attorney. Without the evidence of the camera glasses, it's your word against theirs. And the first thing the bar is going to do, they're not going to do anything. They're going to take your information that you sent them, everything. They're going to copy it and send it directly to the attorney that you're filing the complaint about. The attorney then gets to go over that information and then come up with whatever lies to lie their way out of it. If you have video evidence, it's going to be awfully hard for them to get past the audio and the video. Then the bar will contact you again with a response letter letting you know what is going on or their decision. It is recommended to file a bar complaint for each individual offense you witness any court-appointed lawyer doing. They don't have to be your lawyer. If you are in a courtroom and you witness a lawyer engaging in misconduct, you can file a bar complaint against that lawyer. It don't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who their client is. It doesn't matter if they are your lawyer or somebody else's. If you see any lawyer or prosecutor or judge engaging in malfeasance, nonfeasance, or misfeasance, then you have a valid bar complaint. All they have to be done is witnessed to be doing these violations. And you can get an idea on what information that you should put in bar complaints by using the bar website to look up different attorneys and look up decisions, awards, and hearing schedule. When you click on that, you're taken to courts and grievance decisions. It should tell you the recent lawyers and what they have been, complaints have been filed against them and the results of those complaints. Now, if the complaint is not them found being in violation of some code, then the complaint is not publicly available. If they are sanctioned in any way by the state bar, it will be listed on their website. And if you look down through what lawyers received what on these web pages, you can get an idea of the type of complaints that you should file. The correct wording will be in these complaints. This one here, this guy, truthfulist in statements to others. Every court-appointed lawyer that I've ever met in my life has violated that one every single time. Conflict of interest. I have seen that being violated multiple times. Diligence. Communication. Conduct prejudicial to the administration of justice. That is another very common one. Misuse of client funds. That's another one. Failure to respond to bar counsel investigation. And then dishonesty. Yes, they all do it. Communication. Truthfulness and statements to others. Can candor towards tribunal. Misconduct. Fairness for opposing party and counsel. Conduct prejudicial to the administration of justice. And these things just go on and on and on. So take your time, do your homework, gather your clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence with something like those camera glasses, look up the codes of conduct, and identify the violations of the lawyer that the lawyer did. Take your time and write a nice letter to the bar with all the relevant information that is needed, like on the bar complaint. You know, put their name and the uh, bar, their bar number and your name and address and telephone number and all that stuff in there. And make sure to use that proper wording, abusive, crooked, or incompetent, and send your complaint into the bar. And just wait. Understand, in many counties in Maine, the lawyer works directly for the district attorney, so filing a bar complaint against them is going to result in immediate retaliation by these people. So be ready with that, and you might not want to be around that county. And this is the other intimidation tactic that they use. But if you use your recorder all the time, and you have a, a, either a body cam or your glasses at any encounter with these people, then you are much, much safer than if they're the ones with the camera recording you. Before you go and visit your attorney, once you're all ready with your glasses, a body camera, 
or at least your cell phone, a list of questions that you want to ask the lawyer. If you ask the right questions, they will set themselves up and immediately violate the rules of the bar. They do it so frequently that they're really just sitting ducks. If you ask the right questions and they lie, break confidentiality rules, or any other rules of the bar, you have a valid complaint. So if you want to catch a crooked lawyer, all you have to do is rig yourself up with some James Bond equipment and go talk to them and ask them the right questions. I would document every single encounter with any court-appointed lawyer. Use an app to record them if you have to talk to them by telephone. And remember, anything that you say to them can and will be used against you. Document everything. Identify clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence of misconduct. Have the proof of that misconduct, and you will have a valid bar complaint. Some of these lawyers think they're so smart and like to manipulate and twist things around and screw you over. Turn the tables back on them and use technology and truth to take them down. Learn more on how to file valid bar complaints at despicablemaine.org.